in this lesson we're just going to understand the concept that lies behind uh, back titration okay so back titration involves uh, two reactions where you have uh, a reactant used in the first reaction and then when it's left over it is used in the second reaction so the main instance of a second reaction is to determine how much was in excess and then subtract from the initial to get how much had reacted in the first reaction and use that information to determine the number of moles of an, a substance of a non concentration or non a non number of moles. Okay, so look at this question to help us understand what is basically happening. Alright, so Bishonga was asked to determine the mass. Okay, so in this case they were asking us to find the mass of our calcium carbonate present in the 0 0.125 gram sample of chalk. Bishonga placed the chalk sample in 250 milliliters of conical flask and added 50 milliliters of 0 0.2 moles of HCl using a pipette. So if you observe that, in our first reaction, we have, the rea uh, we have actually calcium carbonate reacting with what? With the hydrochloric acid. Okay, so that is our first reaction. Again, quickly write out the equation. So we have HCl reacting with the calcium carbonate which is contained in the chalk and then the excess hydrochloric acid was titrated with so that is our second reaction so the excess HCl was titrated against um, sodium hydroxide okay so what are the products here so we have HCl reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us sodium chloride plus water okay so what about the reaction between um, HCl and calcium carbonate what products are we expecting there so what we're going to have is <coughs> calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide okay so that is our reaction there so this is what back titration is all about. So we have the same reactant in the first reaction and then reacted again in the second reaction. So there's an aspect of it being in excess or being uh, more than enough. Now we are using that piece of information. We are trying to determine the, uh, what was in excess. And then remember that we are able to find the initial number of moles. So subtract the initial number of moles minus the excess to get how much had reacted in the first reaction so the number of moles that had reacted in the first reaction will help us to determine the number of moles of calcium carbonate by using stoichiometry now if we're able to find the number of moles of our calcium carbonate remember that we do know the molar mass of calcium carbonate so at that point we're able to find what we're able to find this mass so quickly we'll would start first of all by this from the second reaction now in our second reaction, what we had was we had 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide reacting. Its volume was 32.12. So I can quickly find this number of moles. Now we have 0 0.250 moles per liter. And then we are mod multiplying by 32.12. So milliliters would have to take that to liters by dividing by a thousand or multiplying by 10 to the power negative 3. So we now have our volume in liters. So at the liters, you can cancel out. So grab your calculator there and perform your calculation. 0 0.250 multiplied by 32.12 and then divided by or multiply by 10 to the power negative 3. So I'm getting 8, of course that is 8.03 times 10 to the power negative 3. So these are the number of moles of our sodium hydroxide that had reacted in the second reaction. Okay, so I can put sodium hydroxide. So what w why was it necessary for us to write the equation? So I've written the equation so that we're able to see the number of moles. So hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are in the ratio of 1 to 1. So per every mole of sodium hydroxide, there is a mole of hydrochloric acid reacting. 
So now that we have determined the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, we now have the number of moles of what? Of hydrochloric acid. Since these guys are in the ratio of 1 to 1, we can show that this way. So if you look at HCl, and then you're comparing it against sodium hydroxide, these ones are in the ratio of 1 to 1. So we can say uh, 8.03 by 10 to the power negative 3 is the equivalent number of moles of what? Of hydrochloric acid that were in excess. Remember, this is the second reaction. We had already reacted our hydrochloric acid from the first reaction. So this is how much had remained by using the more ratios. Okay. So we are done with our second reaction. Our second reaction is no longer important. Okay. We call it back titration because we start from a second reaction. So we'll call this to be the excess number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Now, if you go to the question, you realize that we were given the information for our initial amount present of hydrochloric acid. So Bishonga placed the chalk, which contained the calcium carbonate, in the 250 milliliter conical flask. And then he added 50 milliliters, 0 0.2 moles of hydrochloric acid. So there we are able to see concentration and volume as well. So we should be able to find the initial number of moles of hydrochloric acid that were present in the first reaction. So the concentration was given to be 0 0.2 moles per liter. Now we're multiplying against the volume, which was 50.0 milliliters. So we multiply by 10 to the power negative 3, or divide by 1,000, so that we can have our volume in liters. So 0 0.2 multiply by 50.0 times 10 to the power negative 3. So our answer or our initial number of moles that were present of hydrochloric acid 0 0.01 moles were initially present. So now understand what is happening here. What is happening is you have been given the initial number of moles that were present okay now you add the main the, the main basic idea is in back titration you need to use a reactant of known concentration and volume and that is basically what we did and that reactant is supposed to be in excess so that it is capable of reacting in another reaction okay now in another reaction we're supposed to use another substance in this case, we are using another base of known concentration, and we use titration to determine the volume. Okay, so that will help us to determine the number of moles of the other reactant, and then use it to determine the number of moles of the reactant coming from the first reaction, in this case, which was hydrochloric acid. Okay, so these are the number of moles that we are initially present. Now, these are the number of moles that we are in excess, determined from the second reaction. So we're able to subtract the two guys to find the number of moles now that are reacted. Because if this is what was initially present, and then this is what was left over or in excess, the difference is what had reacted or what was used up in the first reaction. So we can subtract the two, hoping that you've understood the concept behind back titration. So the difference is um, I'm getting a value of... Uh, 1.97 so the number of moles that had reacted of hydrochloric acid in the first reaction I'm getting 1.97 times 10 one got the three moles okay so we'll observe now the more ratios again what more ratios are we able to observe is the reaction balance already so these guys are in the ratio of 1 to 1 so if the guys are in the ratio of 1 to 1, what, that does, what does that tell us about our calculations? So if they are in the ratio of 1, one to 1, it tells us say, the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that had reacted is basically equivalent to the number of moles of HCl, of our calcium carbon that was present. But if you notice, if you look at the equation, you realize that it is not balanced. So we'll have to balance it properly. What is the difference, sir? So... We have got two chloride ions on the left on the right hand side, so we have to put the two on the 
on the etsy over there to balance it up so of course i'm right there so we've now balanced the equation so these guys are in the ratio of two to one in that case we we, we realize that if we're comparing hcl to our calcium carbonate for every two moles of hydrochloric acid there should be a single mole of calcium carbonate so if you are 1.97 present you'd have to expect it to be come half of it or you can put x there and cross and multiply you still end up dividing by a two so for every two more of hydrochloric acid there's a single more so it is ah it's being halved so we have, we have to half the to, to multiply by half or divide by two so we basically do that now what i'm getting is 9.85 times 10 to the power negative four now these are the number of moles of what of our calcium carbonate that had reacted in the first reaction okay so we use back titration to find the number of moles of calcium carbonate now a question that you can ask yourself is at this point how do you basically get to find the mass how do you get to find the mass so notice that we have been given the formula of calcium carbonate so we are about to do what we are about to find the smaller mass so calcium the molar mass is 40 carbon that is 12.01 Oxygen that is 16, approximately the value that you are going to end up with as a molar mass of a calcium carbonate. I believe you are able to use a predictable. So the molar mass is 100.0869 grams per mole. So you have your molar mass and then you have your number of moles. How do you find the mass? Realize that the number of moles is basically mass divided by molar mass. And looking at the units, if I look at my molar, my units for my molar mass is grams per mole. So I can say per every mole, there is a hundred and point zero eight six nine. Per every mole of what? Calcium carbonate. There is a hundred point zero eight six nine grams. Okay. And then what are we doing? We want to find. Our main goal is to find what? Our main goal is to find the mass. So there, was, there wasn't a need for us to exchange that. We maintain it as it is. So we have 100.0869 grams per every mole of calcium carbonate. Now at this point, we'd have to multiply that by the number of moles of calcium carbonate. So the mass is the same as molar mass multiplied by the number of moles. So the number of moles will cancel with that so that you end up multiplying and then you just get your answer in what in grams so look at our number of moles multiplied by uh, our molar mass what answer are we getting so after performing all the calculations uh, the result that I'm getting is uh, 0 nine eight uh, six grams of uh, calcium carbonate was present in the chalk so basically this is how you handle such a question there may be some cases where they can ask you to determine the mass percentage of our calcium carbonate in the chalk so you'd have to divide what you've calculated there divided by the actual mass okay so basically or in other terms they call it percentage period determine the percentage period so basically this is how much was pure the rest of that mass was impure so you'd have to divide the two and multiply by 100 to get the, the percentage unit so hopefully you now understand the concept that uh, is behind uh, back titration and how we basically get to work with it two reactions will be given the first one of the reactants will be in excess and we react in both reactions start from the, the second reaction determine what was in excess Determine the initial number of moles subtract to get how much had reacted. Use the stoichiometry to find the number of moles of a substance of unknown number of moles or unknown concentration. So thank you very much for taking time to watch. If you've enjoyed the video, do subscribe and share the video with your friends.